Hello, I'm Becky. I'm Amy. I'm Harry. And together we're Team Rig. We've been working on a year-long project with the BBC called Ten Pieces. This project's aimed at junior school children and it's to help them fall in love with classical music using ten selected pieces. Last year we looked at five of those ten pieces and now we're going to look at the other five. The first piece we're looking at today is Zadok the Priest by George Frederick Handel. Handel was born in Germany but lived most of his life here in London and he was a really popular composer. He wrote four anthems for the coronation of King George II in 1727. That's nearly 300 years ago, and Zadok the Priest was one of them, and it's been sung at every British coronation ever since, which I think is pretty cool. Right team, hat song. Short Ride in a Fast Machine was written by an American composer called John Adams. It was originally premiered in 1986. It's a very modern piece that musically describes the title, Short Ride in a Fast Machine. John Adams said of his piece, You know how it is when someone asks you to go for a ride in a terrific sports car, and then you wish you had it? <gasps> Hold on! Guys, what are you doing? It's not night on a bear mountain. It's night on a bear mountain. The music describes a witch's party. Body Percussion makes up our fourth piece, and it's called Connect It by a composer called Anna Meredith. This piece was commissioned by the BBC, especially for this 10 pieces project. Now, you might wonder what body percussion is, and it's simply using your body as an instrument, just like Amy and Harry are doing behind me. It's really good fun, and you guys should definitely have a go. My top tip is, next time you're walking down the street, use your feet as the beat and add in clicks and taps along the way. Great, now, now that we've done all that cracking body percussion, I think, very good, <laughs> I think we should move on to our fifth and final piece. This is by an English composer called Gustav Holst, and the piece is called The Planets. Now, the whole piece contains music about seven planets, but today we're looking at just one of them. Saturn, nope. Pluto, nope. Venus, still no. Uranus. <gasps> you can't call it that anymore, it's called Uranus now. Alright, uh, another planet, uh, Mars. Yes! <laughs> ah, brilliant. So, Mars. Let's talk about Mars. Mars is a very important Roman god, second only to Jupiter, and loads of festivals were held in his honour in March, the month named after him. Mars got a bit of a war deal, actually, because although he's described as a bringer of war, he uses war as a way to bring about peace, not cause destruction. You can hear the orchestra about to go into battle because they play this regular, repetitive rhythmic motif throughout. What's the matter? Someone ate my Mars balls. I wonder who that could have been. You up. Let's play a game of cards. Yeah, all right then. <laughs> uh, where's Harry? Oh, I put him on the naughty set for eating all your chocolate. You didn't? No, I didn't really. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, come on, let's play a game. I will start. Uh, no. Ah, I've got a pair. You sneaky. I've got a pair of Mazorskis. <laughs> <laughs> no. The game we're playing at the moment is called Pairs, and it's an old parlour game from back in the day, before Becky's smartphone and TVs were invented. Goodness, I don't know what I'd do without my smartphone. <laughs> so the idea is all the cards go down on the table, and you take it in turns to turn them over two at a time. And if you get a pair up, like I just did, then you get to keep the pair. <laughs> my favourite card is this one. It's Short Ride in a Fast Machine. I love the car. Oh, that is a pretty cool car. And I really like this one. This one's Zadok the Priest. I love the 
the bells, Minnie Rick. I think it might be my favourite. <laughs> we originally started off with a C major scale of bells. These are like the white notes on the piano. We've now added the black notes, you can tell because they've got black stalks as well. They are the chromatic notes, so we've now got a completely chromatic octave. We've also added these bits here, which are the swirly abacus things that you can move all of these parts to and make different sounds. And we've also got this bit along here, which has got lots of vintage bike bells, hasn't it? Yep, we can uh, ring and ding them, which I quite like doing. You do. So, Ames, shall we take these off and go and take them to the table and play some tunes? Yeah, what do you reckon we should play? Uh, I think we should play Night on a Bear Mountain by Mazorski, and I think we should do Mars by Holst. We've already done that joke. Right, come on then. This is our music box mini rig, and it works by feeding a piece of paper in, turning the handle, and the sound shoots off down the other end where you listen to it with an ear trumpet. Now this is just a copper pipe, just like plumbers use. You might wonder why we hold the ear trumpet so close, and that's because the sound is really small and delicate, so we hold it up right to our ear so we can hear it. A bit like an earphone. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We have Zadok the Priest by Handel programmed into our piece of paper, but you could program any music you liked, couldn't you? Absolutely. And I think it would be really interesting to show everybody at home exactly how the music boxes work. So should we go over to the table? Let's go. Come on. Okay, so how to program your music box. It's a little bit like manuscript paper, which of course is the five lines and four spaces that we read music on. But here, our programmable music box paper has holes, and each hole represents a different note. You can see along the top here, we've got different letters. And if you follow the line down and hole punch, then you'll get that particular note. So, when we feed it into the music box and turn the handle, we get different sounds. That's really good. So, also, you punch the holes in different places, so just for everybody who doesn't never seen one of these before, that will change uh, the pitch because it moves the different pins, right? Exactly, we've got different length pins and they produce different notes. Clever, isn't it? Really clever.